Good evening. I'm Keith Ross. Chicago television viewers lost a good friend recently. Tonight, we pay tribute to one of Chicago's very own. You can ask just about anyone who grew up in Chicago, and they'll tell you what they remember about Ringmaster Ned. Tonight, we pay tribute to this gentleman, a gentleman who spent 25 years of his broadcasting career in Chicago. Ringmaster Ned, that's me. Not only have we lost a part of our childhood, but we lost a friend. A friend who gave us a room full of cadet pilots, introduced us to exotic pets, took us down the Mississippi River, and gave us a circus full of fun. Ned's career began in the 1930s in Owine, Iowa, where he launched his professional acting career at the age of 16 by touring in over 40 states. In 1941, he settled down to manage a radar factory and pursue his love of flying. He then became the Iowa State Director of Aeronautics, where he owned his own aircraft sales agency and flying school. At this time, he was also staff announcer and commentator at WHO in Des Moines, Iowa. These experiences propelled him to commute from Iowa to Chicago to produce and host Uncle Ned Squadron for NBC Radio in 1950. He worked at NBC for over five years, producing programs such as Captain Hearts and His Pets, where Ned played the part of an airline captain and traveled all over the world and learned about exotic pets. Kids Holiday was another NBC hit. Ned also played the part of a district attorney in one of the nation's first soap operas, A Time to Live. Ned credits Uncle Johnny Coons of Noontime Comics for giving him his start on Chicago television. Johnny Coons, one of the all-time nice people. Um, Johnny took a vacation one time and, uh, in 1950 and asked me if I'd do a show. And uh, I did. And uh, that kind of, kind of started me. While working at NBC, Ned became acquainted with a father and son stagehand team. Mike Cusick, a WGN employee for over 30 years, reflects on Ned Locke. Way back in the early 50s, my dad and I were stagehands at NBC Channel 5, and uh, we were working with Ned at the time. He did an occasional weather spot, Uncle Ned's squadron, uh, different things. And, and uh, then when uh, we left NBC, Ned came over here, and we came over. I came over here. My dad didn't continue, but uh, I met him again. We worked together. We started day one right on uh, what is now Bozo's show. This was Bozo's Circus. Uh, We've been very good friends for a long, long time. We've been to his home. I remember one particular instance. I was president of a small homeowners association. I reside in Arlington Heights. And we had a big kitty of $400. And I said, Ned, we have $400. We'd like you to come out. He says, Mike, I don't cross the street for $400. But for you, I'll do it for nothing. He did. In 1956, he moved to WGN Television, where he became one of the hosts of Lunchtime Little Theater with Uncle Bucky, Uncle Ned, Aunt Dodie, and Jerry the Giraffe. It was a successful four-year run that ended in 1960. Then Ned took over as the kindly old panel wheeler who traveled up and down the Mississippi River showing cartoons and special segments which featured live animals. Although Ned was the host there, a couple of times, his animal guests tried to take over the show. This one time we had a 1,400-pound baby hippopotamus on the show, and uh, the baby hippopotamus all but sunk the ship. Uh, it, it worked out very well, but, uh, you know, people were looking for ladders, and, hey, how do I get up out of here? I don't want to be near, the, uh, near this raging hippopotamus. Also joining him on paddle boat, was his sidekick, Beaver the Puppet, worked by Roy Brown. Ned and I go back a long way. Uh, I think the first show we worked together was Paddle Boat. I created the Beaver Puppet for that, and I was also uh, Stokes, the boiler room man, whose face you never saw. I worked with Ned for many, many years, and he was a true professional on and off stage. It was my pleasure to know him. Lunchtime Little Theater, Paddle Boat, 
They were both successful children's programs which featured Ned Locke. His expertise contributed to what was needed to launch the most successful children's program in television history. Bozo's Circus is on the air! How do you feel? <laughs> you look good and you sound good. It's nice to see you. And how are you? Well, thank you very much for letting us be with you. Yes, Bozo Circus, a show that Ned will be best remembered for. His happy face and jolly spirit, whistle blowing and booming voice all played a part in making Bozo Circus the success that it continues to be today. Former director and current producer of Bozo Circus, Al Hall, remembers working with Chicago television legend, Ned Locke. I really miss Ned when he left here because he was, a, he was the person around whom the Bozo Show flowed. Although it was called Bozo Circus, it more rightfully might have been called Ned Circus because uh, Ned did all the commercials, he did the grand prize game, he did the audience game, he introduced everything. He was the, the locust around which this whole thing revolved. He was the pivot point. He was the kind of, he was the guy and the person and the, uh, the fixture that kept this whole thing uh, in more or less in sync and uh, kept it from tilting out of, of uh, complete uh, stabilization. Uh, with the screwy things that Bob used to do, or Bell used to do as Bozo, and that Ray used to do, and Don Sandberg, Ned was always the calming force, and he always maintained, uh, I thought, a very dignified presentation. Of course, once each show, such silliness would make way for some serious game playing. For 16 consecutive seasons, Ned led children through the paces of... We're ready for more fun, because right now it's time to play our grand prize game. Everyone wants to be lucky, but of course only two can, one boy and one girl. And they are selected by our magic arrows. Mr. Bob, if you please. There, no, no, sweetie. Sit down, honey. Sit down, honey. I think it was on the boy, dear. Sit down. Yes. Where is it, gentlemen? It's in the boy behind the little girl. That's what I thought. No, 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 no. It's the little boy, I believe, in blue. Will you raise your hand? Is that the boy? That's the boy. All right. Bend over and drop it right in. Good. Number two. Good. Number three. The show became such a success that during the 1960s, a prime time program was aired on Wednesday nights featuring composites from the new time circus called Big Top, a show that once again featured Ned as host and ringmaster. Yes, Big Top is on the air. The format was loose, uh, uh, scripts were loose, and uh, uh, it was a real hack. But uh, after a while, it, uh, it worked out. The program's popularity drew a ticket waiting list of 10 years. So there were often times when Bozo Circus brought its wit and charm to other locations rather than the WGN studios. Medina Temple, Airy Crown Theater, the Auditorium Theater, Lincoln Park Zoo, and Soldier Field. Unlike Bob Bozo Bell, who decided to keep his Bozo character in the television tube, 
Ringmaster Ned made thousands of personal appearances throughout Chicagoland shopping malls, amusement parks, and the like. At one time, he and Roy Cookie the Clown Brown produced a traveling circus that appeared at various fundraisers in schools. Current director of the Bozo Show, Dick Flanders, remembers when Ned Locke approached him to be stage manager on his traveling show. Hired me out on many occasions to do various jobs stage managing for him at the Kane County Fair and various other functions. He always treated us all, all the acts, myself, Roy Brown, like kings. We were, we were just the best to him and he always was the best to us. Just a tremendously wonderful, warm human being. I liked Ned Locke tremendously. When Ned wasn't toiling on the circus, he was an account executive for WGN selling advertising time. If he could have, he probably would have worked 24 hours a day because he was just the type of guy that would. He came in here early in the morning, did his work as a salesman, came down, had breakfast with the boys, and then he would go into the studio for his read-through, go do his show, and he always gave it 110%, and then he would immediately go up back up to his office to call clients. The man was fantastic. Ned was responsible for giving success to a local magician by the name of Marshall Brodine, who he talked into buying commercial time for his TV magic cards. You know, most magic tricks are easy once you know the secret. Now take TV magic cards. Brodine would later become Wizzle the Wizard after appearing several times on the Bozo Circus as Marshall Brodine. I joined the show as Wizzo about approximately the same time Roy came on as Cookie the Clown. And ever since then, we've been very, very good friends. He's a super guy to work with. He's one of my best friends. I love him dearly. We're, he's a great guy. He's a great performer. He's, what else can I say? He's one of the best. In addition to selling advertising time, Ned also did thousands of live and tape commercials for Chicago television advertisers and was a staff weatherman for WGN on the nightly news. We did a, a news sports and weather show from 6.30 to 7 o'clock. Then I did the commercials on the Wednesday night fights on ABC. I'd get off the air at 7 o'clock and uh, run across the bridge, across the river, down to uh, the State Lake building, the ABC studios were. And... Uh, WBKB. Yeah, it, well, it originated there. See, the fights were, they originated all over the nation, but the commercials originated uh, at BKB. And uh, I worked for Menon and uh, one of Day Vitamins, Miles Laboratories. And if I was lucky, I would get a double header. I could do a Menon shave cream thing, and they'd shoot me kind of from the side, not full face, you know, and I'm doing the, the shtick and talking about how great it is. And then the next time, I'd be over at a table eating a one-a-day vitamin. And, uh, but it'd be, it'd be like a different fella, you know. Yeah, right. I'd have a t-shirt on when I was shaving and a towel, and I'd be in a suit and a tie uh, with, with the vitamins. But uh, that lasted for, oh, about a year and a half. And uh, it was good, good. I asked Ned back in 1988, what was a memorable event that happened on the Bozo Circus Show? Well, two stand out. Um, one time uh, during a grand prize game, a cute little girl, about six years old, and she was scared, as all the kids were. Why not? You know, first time on television. And she got into bucket number one, and everybody clapped and came time to go to bucket number two and she wet her pants. <laughs> and, and she just stood there, you know, wetting her pants. And I felt so sorry for this girl. And uh, I hugged her and, uh, you know, I'd have killed anybody that had laughed at her. Yeah. And then the um, President Kennedy assassination. Of course, we were on the air when that happened. Uh, we were in the middle of the show. We broke the bulletin, and we picked up the show, and Ned carried it off with uh, a little bit of reserve. He wasn't quite sure how to handle it, but he carried it off just beautifully. And then, of course, <clears throat> when the second bulletin came in and we stopped the show, we took the show off the air, Ned handled the situation with the audience, explaining to the, to the kids here in terms, I think, that they could understand what the situation was and why we had to stop the program. Uh, it, I think it demonstrated the great ability he had and the great understanding he had for his audience, which is something that you don't find in a lot of people who are in this business. 
Ned presided over the cast of thousands until his retirement on July 9, 1976, a day he anticipated that would happen for about two years. When asked why he retired, he replied, The challenges were gone. Uh, I couldn't get nervous. I couldn't get excited, which you should do. No sweaty do. palms, huh? No sweaty palms. Like mine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. You're going to do a good show. But see, mine are dry. Yeah. And uh, uh, you, you have to get up, really up, for something to do a good job. And I was having difficult doing that. Well, I guess that's a sign to leave. Why, why stick around and not do a good job? Bow out when you know you're doing oh, a good job. Oh, yeah, go out when you're up here, not down there. Fighting back tears, he said farewell to his WGN colleagues and Chicagoland TV friends on that day. Thank you for 25 years of the good life. I respect you. I appreciate everything you have done. And now, with your permission, I'm going to say goodbye to some friends. Thank you. <laughs> Secretary a man ever had. He then sold his home in Wheaton and his sprawling ranch in Colorado and moved to Kimberling City, Missouri, a part of the country he fell in love with while flying one of his planes over, and moved into his dream house he built there. He relaxed for four months and then went into real estate and later became the town's park commissioner, then police commissioner, and finally the mayor for two consecutive terms. Well, it's a fine little town, uh, a lot of Chicagoans down there, and uh, I think being mayor is a, kind of a way of my paying dues to some good neighbors. <laughs> a position that he held up until his death last week. In 1986, he rejoined former cast members Bob Bozo Bell, Ray Oliver O. Oliver Rayner, Don Sandy the Tramp Sandberg, and Bob Trendler on the Bozo 25th anniversary special. When he entered the stage at the Medina Temple before the show went on the air, the standing ovation and thunderous applause let Mr. Ned know what an impact he had made in Chicago television. It was, out of doubt, the biggest bozo spectacular in history. Oh, I smell pie in the air tonight. <laughs> Just this past September, I was fortunate enough to be in the attendance in the cast of thousands and see Ned make his last appearance on television during the 30th anniversary of the Bozo Show. During the supervision of his last grand prize game, he showed he hadn't lost his style and memorable introduction of the show's most popular feature. And now it's time to play our grand prize game! to pick our players, one boy and one girl, with the tips and the tips only of the Magic Arrows. Professor, please. During a taping of a special on the retirement of WGN's first bozo, Bob Bell, back in 1984, Ned reflected on why he felt the program was such a huge success. We didn't attempt to really and truly educate, but instead entertain. Figure kids need a break in their day like everybody else, you know, and, and give them a break. And it, it was an honest effort. There wasn't any cover up, there wasn't, uh, there just wasn't any phoniness. And I think that will endure. If there are no superlatives that I could uh, utter that would even match Ned's uh, talent, uh, his sincerity, 
and his lust for life. Uh, I, I think that he would have loved to live to be 150, and if he did, uh, every year that he existed would have been beneficial to the entire community in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I, I certainly miss him, but uh, we all come and go. But uh, unfortunately, Ned left too early. Whether it was Bozo Circus, Lunchtime Little Theater, or Uncle Ned Squadron, Ned was an ever-present reminder that we were never as old as we thought we were. He pitched that piece of our childhood we have never let go of. All of the things little boys always say they're going to do when they grow up, Ned did. He managed two airports, flew his own airplanes and helicopters, logged over 20,000 flight hours, invented a number of inventions that have been patented, became a police commissioner and the mayor of a town. In addition, Ned was a skilled writer who wrote over 6,000 radio and television scripts and a book. I wrote a book, um, which I found out was uh, maybe selfish on my part. I had a, I had an unusual childhood and, and growing up, and uh, uh, I had I had some problems. Um, not that I was a bad kid. I don't mean that, but mentally I had some problems of adjusting to situations in my family, and. Uh, so I put it all down in the book uh, with the original intent of selling the book. And I got all done. And I realized, you, you, you dummy, you, you've been your own psychiatrist here. It's Paper the, psychiatrist. Right. Best therapy I ever had. I got all done with the book. I closed it up. I loved everybody in the book, which I didn't before. Put the book away. Nobody's going to read it. <laughs> Nobody will ever read it. It was so good to see him back here on the 30th anniversary show. He looked so good. I can remember we did the grand prize game, well, right about where the camera is standing when uh, uh, that you're watching this on. And Ned walked in the studio, and he, was, he stood straight. He had, had the big top hat on. He had the red coat on. He looked like he had looked 25, 30 years ago when the show was on. It was, it was a magnificent thing to see, and it would be a very pleasant memory. Uh, I think we'll all miss him. He was one hell of a man. I miss him. Ned was somebody that I enjoyed working with. He gave me such an inspiration and uh, I could just go on and on and on. He is a, a, what a marvelous individual. Worked with Ned so many years. When he moved down to Missouri, Marshall Brodine and I used to go down and visit him every summer. And, uh, he was quite a gracious host, as well as a great man. And we're all going to miss him dearly. During our lifetimes, we come across certain people who are role models for us. People we idolize. People we try and imitate. That one person in my lifetime was Ned Locke. Ned was an inspiration to so many people, but none greater than myself. I'll always remember what Ned taught me. Remember, he used to say, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. An analogy that works in every aspect of life. As I sit here this evening in front of this television camera, I credit Ned for giving me the inspiration to carry on in life as well as my television career. Ned, thanks for encouraging me in the grand prize game of life.